We've actually been able to utilize imaging technology and three-dimensional models to better take care of the patients who have come back with severe head injuries. One of the great opportunities that we have, and this has been true throughout history, is developing surgical techniques because of a conflict which can then be translated into civilian medicine. Oftentimes with a blast injury from an IED or a sniper wound, there's a significant amount of loss of bone material from the skull. We have an option of potentially taking bone from the opposite side of the patient's skull or using a plastic model. This model starts off as a vat of liquid and there's a laser which fires into that vat of liquid and hardens a small cube of the material. And a CAT scan is comprised of multiple layers which image the bone. So by taking each of those layers and hardening what is bone on the CAT scan and then bringing the laser up a millimeter and doing it again, you basically create this model within that vat of liquid as it's hardened by the imaging technology. And then this is pulled out of the liquid and we have a precise model of the patient's skull and remaining bone. We're able to create the prosthetic implant and then put that back in and protect the brain. This particular patient was injured in Iraq. A sniper rifle uh, was fired and impacted just above his ear. And the bullet traversed the brain and exited the back of the skull. Typically, this would not be a survivable injury, but his combat buddy was able to put pressure on the bleeding, uh, hold that pressure through the helicopter ride into the operating room in order to keep him literally from bleeding to death within minutes. Today this patient is doing extremely well. He's at home with his family. He's recovered very well. I have some great photographs of him on a trampoline with his children uh, and had dinner with him just a few years ago after uh, he had completely recovered from the surgery. This particular technology, because of the severity of the wounds that we encounter, will likely change how complex craniofacial reconstruction in the face of trauma is practiced globally in the future.